Okay, so we've been working on a new plastic injection molding machine and this one is our fourth. The big new element in this design is the frame. It's an inexpensive drill press frame which we purchased online and then modified. It promised a really nice compromise with all the benefits of a dedicated mechanism but with far less construction overhead. However, some of its parts are plastic and so the concern was whether or not it would be strong enough and heat resistant. Well, after extensive testing I can say that for a hobbyist machine it certainly is both of those things. And it offers a cast iron base which can be screwed to the bench and a very smooth action and a vise was supplied with it which you can also bolt to the base. The injector head is our own design and is basically the same as before. We've machined a solid stainless steel barrel and plunger. They'll never rust and there's no plating to break down so it's extremely durable. The top ring is also stainless steel. It forms a funnel into which you can pour your injection load and it provides a solid anchor to the spine. The heater band is 120 watts. The injector head is controlled by our usual digital controller box which allows you to set and then automatically maintain a desired temperature. It drives a solid state relay so there are no moving parts to wear out and there's no clicking relay. It connects to mains via a very common socket on the back. OK, let's have a look at the machine in action. The first thing to do is charge the machine with a dose of plastic pellets. We're using a sugar dispenser for that job. This is a two-part aluminium mould which we made just to test machine functionality. It's a kind of a wheel thing. Just uh, put it in the vise, clamp it tightly, put the vise uh, in the machine. It's shimmed so that it fits tightly under the mould then pull down very smartly on the plunger and inject the plastic into the part. Then pull the vise from the machine, take the mould out of the vise. It's likely to be very hot, so you've got to be careful. Split the mould and there's the part in the mould. It's not a very cleverly designed mould this, so getting things out is a little bit more troublesome than it needs to be. But cut the flashing off there and have at it with a screwdriver. Again, not something you'd do with a specially designed mould because you like to scratch the inside. But anyway, there's the part. It's a little bit bent because we pulled it out hotter than we should have done. But um, you get the general idea. And whilst this mould was aluminium, it's possible to make moulds uh, by casting them in uh, plastic resin so you can make copies of original parts in that way with no tooling required, no, no machinery that is. Well, I hope you found that interesting um, and if you're interested in owning such a machine you might be interested to know that this one's for sale. A summary of the attributes. Firstly it's uh, one cubic inch capacity. Uh, all of the hot parts are machined from solid stainless steel so it's very durable. 120 watts, 220 volts, it's got a digital controller solid state relay, nothing to wear out and the vice is included. Um, so if you're interested in buying this machine or one like it um, or even one not quite like it then by all means feel free to contact me in the comments below.